As tonight at 8.45 p.m. declare me the winner of the 2016 presidential election. Despite its small size and population, Ghana is one of Africa's most advanced nations. Ghana is a West African country located on the Gulf of Guinea's coast. It was the first black African country in the south of the Sahara to be independent of colonial rule. Ghana is one of Africa's oldest democracies with a history of free elections and government changes between the major political parties. When it comes to governance, Ghana's current president Nana Kufu Dankwa Ado has implemented several policies that are helping to grow the country's economy. This is not surprising given that he centered his campaign on the economy, promising to stabilize the country's foreign exchange rate and reduce employment. On behalf of the people of Ghana, he received the Africa America Institute's National Achievement Award in 2017. The award was given to honor Ghana as a country that stands for African freedom, democracy and stability. Welcome to Think Rich Media, the community which brings to you entrepreneurial, business and personal development content to inform, motivate and inspire you. We also want to introduce you to our special African development playlist because we strongly believe entrepreneurship rather than global PT is the key to Africa's growth and development. So if you're African and you aren't subscribed to our community, you're missing out. Ghana's long-serving head of state, Nana Ado Dankwa Kufu Ado, is a politician and a lawyer. Nana Kufu Ado was born on March 29, 1944 in Accra, Ghana, to Edward and Adeline Akufu Ado. In Accra, he attended government boys' schools and then Rowe Road School for his primary education. He later completed his secondary education at Lansing College in the United Kingdom between 1957 and 1961, after which he returned to Ghana. In 1964, he enrolled at the University of Ghana, where he graduated in 1967 with a bachelor's degree in economics. Akufo Ado returned to the United Kingdom to study law and was called to the bar in England. While serving as Attorney General, he worked to repeal the criminal liberal law, and as President of Ghana, he successfully signed the Rights Information Bill, which had been before the Ghanaian Parliament for two decades. He served in the Second, Third and Fourth Parliaments of the Fourth Republic, representing the Abuakwa constituency. He was the first chairperson of DHL Ghana Limited and previously served three terms as a member of parliament between 1996 and 2008. In the 1996 elections, he received 28,526 votes out of the 50,263 valid votes cast, representing 56.75% of the votes. Oba Oraku Amofa, who received 20,173 votes. In October 1998, Akofo Ado ran for the NPP presidential nominations but was defeated by John Kufo, who went on to win the December 2000 presidential elections and became president in January of 2001. In the 2000 elections, Akufo Addo was Kofo's chief campaigner. Under the Kofo administration, he served as attorney general from 2001 to 2003 and as minister of foreign affairs from 2003 to 2007. As foreign minister, he was fully involved in the successful ECOWAS peace efforts in Sierra Leone, Liberia, Ivory Coast and Guinea-Bissau, and he served as the organization's chairman in 2003. Nana Ado Dankwa Kufo Ado currently serves as a high-level panel on the oceans and co airs the SDG's eminent advocates group which has 17 members. Akufo Ado ran for president for the first time in 2008 and again in 2012, both times as a candidate of the new patriotic party. He was defeated both times by candidates from the National Democratic Congress, John Evans Atamius in 2008 and Ramani Mahama in 2012. He was chosen as the new Patriotic Party's presidential candidate for the third time in the 2016 general elections and he defeated Mahama this time. He was elected president of Ghana in January 2017, defeating his opponent in the first round, making him the first candidate to win an outright majority in the Ghanaian presidential election. He was re-elected for a second term in 2020, which will end in January 6, 2025. Flagstaff House's current resident has the support of his predecessor who urged Ghanaians to unite behind the head of states and to continue working for economic and social development. Ghana's image on the African continent has been enhanced by the transparent election of Akufo Ado and the peaceful transition of power, one of the continent's most successful democracies that can be found in the country. He is married to Rebecca Akufo Ado, the daughter of George Jacob Hackenberg Griffithings Randolph, who served as Speaker of Ghana's Parliament during the Third Republic. 
Niakroma Mfumi Akufo Ado, Edwina Nana Akufo Ado, Adriana Duko Akufo Ado, Yebwakwa Akufo Ado, and Valerie Obaze are their five daughters. Akufo Ado had inherited economic problems, partly due to a depression of global prices on Ghana's key commodities, beginning public wage costs, and increasing debts. At his inauguration, President Akufo Ado vowed to put Ghana on a new path of progress and prosperity during his term in office. In the first year of his presidency, he made good on one of the most prominent promises he had made during his campaign. He initiated a plan to establish a manufacturing facility in each of the nation's more than 200 districts. Students in Ghana will not have to pay for the cost of secondary education after the country's president introduced a policy in September 2017 called Free Senior High School. It is a necessary investment in the nation's future workforce, according to the president, and it will help parents who are unable to pay for their children's education due to financial difficulties. The program was met with a positive reaction from the nation as a whole. Parents and students were excited and fervent about the program. However, private schools that are opposed to the program state that it will decrease the number of students enrolling in their system. There has been a steady increase over the years in the number of testimonies that have been received from parents and students regarding how the free SHS policy has had a profound positive effect on their lives. The seven-year coordinated program of economic and social development policies was introduced by the president in 2018 and its primary goal is to increase employment opportunities across the nation. According to the President, the policies are founded on five pillars of growth and development, which are respectively revitalizing the economy, transforming agriculture and industry, revamping economic and social infrastructure, strengthening social protection and inclusion, and reforming the delivery system of public services institutions. As of the year 2019, the number of regions in Ghana has increased from 10 to 16 under the administration of the country's president. In the year 2020, he gave his signature to the UNAID's public letter on people's vaccines, which was a campaign that demanded that the COVID-19 vaccine be made available to everyone. He participated in the signing alongside other world leaders. He stated in his writing that all people everywhere must have access to the vaccine once one is available. Concerns were raised that people in wealthier countries may have quicker access to the vaccine than people in poorer countries. As a result, an open letter was written advocating that any vaccine against the disease should be free and made available to all people at no cost. Ghana made history when it became the first nation on the African continent to receive COVID-19 vaccines as part of the COVAX program run by the World Health Organization in February 2021. The shipment included a total of 600,000 doses of vaccines manufactured by AstraZeneca. The President's hard work, patriotic contributions and numerous policy interventions from the creation of over 350,000 public sector jobs, reduction in the cost of electricity, reduction of import duties by 50%, restoration of nursing and teacher training allowances, free senior high school policy, among others, has truly contributed to alleviating the suffering of Ghanaian workers. He is Ghana's ideal leader and he is trusted to do more for his nation. That brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to like it and also share with us your thoughts in the comment section down below and share with your friends. Turning on notifications in order not to miss out on any of our videos help our channel grow.